Hey y'all, how's it going? Uh, I'm Jeff. Today we're going to be streaming in Blender. Uh, let me see, I'm just kind of getting uh, a little bit of a grip on my controls and everything over here, so give me just a minute. See the uh, I'm using a, a Wacom Pro tablet, and it this one has a little bit different uh, of a control setup than the one I usually use. So I'm just figuring that out real quick. I guess pretty straightforward. Let's see. Uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna make today. I'm wondering if our uh, cool ambient music is coming through. We have a Twitch extension for some uh, copyright free uh, tracks to try to liven up the stream. Uh, let's see, let's not do that stuff. That to be a click. I want this. I want this to be a middle click. You could try that. This is actually easier to deal with than I thought it was going to be, so that's nice. So if we do middle click, yeah, great. We can pan around really easily, and I can easily select everything I want to. Thanks, Wacom. What's the end product going to look like in Blender? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I haven't thought necessarily about what specifically we're going to make this week. Um, but these this headphones are so intense I cannot hear myself. Uh, we're going to get rid of those. Um, uh, yeah, so I was thinking about um, we had this uh, discussion last week during the stream that uh, we were going to make ourselves a little video game and sort of week by week you're going to see that develop just a tiny bit at a time uh, until we have something loosely playable. Um, one thing that we did last week was we were doing like like full-on sculpting, which is great. Um, love the sculpt tool. You know, we were in sculpt mode and doing all sorts of fun, like, whatever. Uh... It's kind of hard because it's just a box, but, um, and that was really cool, but uh, when you're going into, say, like, uh, an Oculus Quest or something like that, um, it normally isn't going to handle very well a bunch of assets that are, like, you know, 10,000 polygons. Um, it's going to be really, really slow unless you've got something super uh, souped up, like one of the new Rifts. Um, so I thought maybe uh, what I'd play around with this week was making some uh, lower resolution assets. Um, and we'll just make some stuff and we'll put them in a room. And once we get into Unity, we could start playing with rigging and um, and like how to make them interactable. But for now, just making some things that we would like to see in whatever game we make. Um, that could be... 
That could be anything that y'all think. Maybe we'll let the chat decide a little bit. Um, we, last week we made um, uh, like an old timey prospector looking guy, or he's kind of a Monopoly guy, like with a, a monocle and a mustache. And we also made a cute little devil guy. And I think that those are gonna be our main characters. Uh, we might go back and reduce the polygon count on them to make them usable. But uh, now we gotta figure out where they're gonna go and what it's gonna look like um, and how they're gonna interact. Uh, maybe it's just kind of an exploration game or a mystery. Um, any ideas on where like a general setting. I started playing around with uh, um, in the VR lab, which uh, I'm streaming on behalf of the VR lab. Um, we were playing around with making, uh, or I was playing around with making a buddy cop mystery pair. Definitely. I think, yeah, I think, it, I think that we're looking at some sort of an investigation. Um, I was playing around with making an office, like a weird, creepy office space. Um, and I made like a chair and a desk and started making a cubicle and uh, maybe they are investigating an abandoned office and I could uh, start to recreate some of those things. Um, it was challenging so but I, I thankfully I've done it before so we could we could maybe start to make some of those basic assets. Um, let me see, what did I make? What did I make the other day? I made, uh, so we're gonna exit sculpt mode, we're gonna go into edit mode. And I made a Netflix documentary. Uh, yeah. Um, or just an animated series. You can, you can do animation in Blender, um, which is really cool. It's getting increasingly popular for that purpose. Because uh, you can make high res things and rig them and then animate them. It does take a while, but it is totally, one free and two powerful enough to do animation. So uh, let's just start making some assets and then we can we can make it VR, we can animate it, we can do whatever we want. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna highlight these and just reduce that down. We're gonna make a little office chair. Ooh. Uh, so in order to select everything easier, we're gonna go into wireframe. Now I can lift this up. How'd that get so wonky? Uh, let's just let's just delete you. Make a new one. Uh, so Shift A to insert an object. We're going to insert. Uh, to make the butt of a chair, I think the closest thing is going to be a cube. So I'm going to do the classic cube. Going to make, going to make y'all lower. And yeah, that's good. So let's go. I'm going to right click. It's gonna be like alt click, alt click. Now just figuring out my pen settings here. That's how I zoom. That's fun. That's useful. Command. Right click to zoom. And we'll just cheat and use the mouse. So we've got that subdivided. Subdividing is just going to add more lines and vertexes to, to whatever you're doing. Uh, so that makes it a little easier to manipulate. Now we've got this nice complex mesh here um, and we are upside down there we go 
Uh, so to make this a little more like the butt of a chair, let's just start moving things in. Come on, guys. Everybody now. Uh, and there's a couple cool tools over here that are really useful for this. Um, don't want insert faces. We want something I'm not seeing. Not extrude. Not bevel. Oh. It's you. Scale tool. There we go. You can grab them and just kind of scale everything at once. Very useful for keeping things kind of uniform. And so that'll be like the front of the chair. Go over here. Just need this much. I'm just gonna move you down a little bit. You know, this, and this doesn't need to be really perfect. Um, there's gonna be a lot of steps, including like uh, different um, different textures, different like bevel effects that we can sort of add to this later. Uh, that will make this seem like it has a little more depth. Um, That's kind of, I guess that should be like down because that's where like your butt's gonna go. Let's go back to our kind of regular view. It's kind of thin, but that's like a little, it's like a little, a little padding. Bring it in on the bottom. You know, I think part of the mystery is that this is like, why is this office so? uncomfortable. Why is this such a terrible office? And part of it, the the player will find that it's because the chairs are so uncomfortable that there's a murder mystery going on. Um, and someone should have talked to management about the quality of the chairs. Okay. Let's bring you down. Um, one thing I am not very good at in Blender is remembering what my hotkeys are for like switching between these different tools. I don't think it's the most necessary thing, but it does make you a lot faster. So to anyone starting out in Blender, it's probably a good idea to have some guides and stuff up. Um, okay. Wireframe, let's just like beef out this chair a little more. mystery of the very uncomfortable chairs. Yeah, it's gonna, I think that um, we'll start doing numbers on Steam once this comes out. Uh, which one did I say was the front? I say this was the front of the chair, so that should be. Yeah, that makes sense. There's a little, a little butt divot over there where your butt goes. Let's go. Down like that. Nice. Um, OK, and then I should really throw in a reference. So I'm going to switch over to Google real quick to just find an office chair to look at. Um, I don't know if I can just paste an image in here or how that's going to work. Just save image. Um, da, 
just uh, uh, last week, not last week, two weeks ago, if anyone was um, watching, uh, you'll know that Jillian and I were both in here streaming. Um, Jillian locked out because I had some extremely garlicky pasta for lunch and should not be sharing an office with anybody because I smell terrible. So, um, everybody wins. How do I import? Is this like Finder? Sorry, Mac problems. I'll just drop you in. Work. Okay, well, this is probably not very fun to watch. So we're just going to have off stream reference. Just trust me when I say that I've got a picture of a chair over here somewhere. Really just like remembering how chairs work. There's so many little details. Okay, so this is going to be like kind of a modern looking. Um, A modern looking chair. I'm gonna have some like metal armrests and stuff coming up. Uh, so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start extruding all of this stuff back here. All of that stuff. All of that. Position right. Deselect you. And then our extrude tool. Just ever so useful. Um, I should probably at some point go back and clean up some of these polygons because they're a little dense and goofy, but that's just going to be a future Jeff problem. I'm going to extrude you up. I'm going to do that a few times. So we've got kind of a chair back. Ah, oh, shoot, I messed up. There we go. Okay. One, two, three, four seems reasonable. Yeah, that's good looking good. Okay. And I just want to maybe give it a little dimension now. So let's go back over to wireframe and not do that. We're going to select all of this stuff. and not extrude, but just sort of kind of bring it back a little bit, make it look like a normal chair. You kind of get like the, like, maybe you don't get the style of chair I'm going for yet. It would be helpful to, next time I'll figure out how to get a reference in here and not spend 20 minutes on it. these guys and we'll do our scale tool again and so with the scale tool you see all these little planes that's sort of affecting it'll scale only along that plane that you refer to so like this one right here 
go this way, this one over here. It, d it doesn't really apply because we can't really move along that plane. Um, but like this, scale that way. So right now I want the red plane. Scale in there. Like that just a little bit. Neat. Okay, so here's like kind of the city part of our chair. And now I want... Let's keep it simple. I'm just not going to give it arms for now. But we can take all of these. What have I done? Oh, okay. uh, these guys and subdivide so I can get access to these ones in the middle. And we're going to go back and we're going to keep extruding. So just simplifying. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe we want to go. stuff. Hope everybody had a good Labor Day weekend. Um, I did. I had a, a little extra dog with me for the weekend. We were fostering my girlfriend and I were fostering a very small little puppy and it was just deeply chaotic <laughs> really fun though um, oh thanks uh, NCSU mod for the yeah, maybe yeah we can look up some tutorials right now Many ways to import images into Blender. The best depends on what we want to do the image once we've imported it. Best way is to drag and drop it. See, I tried that. Drop it into the 3D viewport. Maybe I'll go back to object mode and then try that again. Control. That's how I do you. Okay, so going here, I've got this guy. Oh, look at that! Easy enough. Now we've got the little chair. See, this is what I'm. This is the, this is what I was talking about. Thank you, Jillian. Jillian's our mod today. Uh, I'll just throw this guy like over here so I can look at it. Maybe we'll get a side view too. My office chair. I'm gonna take some. I'm taking some some serious liberties with this office chair. That kind of gets the vibe I'm going for. Uh, let's save view to the desktop. Gonna rotate. Cool. 
I guess it's got a little more of a like should go like back and then forward and then back again but this chair as we've established is meant to be uncomfortable so um, Okay. Well, that's fine. Let's start working on the bottom. So I'm not gonna do this this weird little gap thing. We're just gonna go kind of like like most chairs do. We're just gonna have the little thing here. Um, and we gotta extrude that again, and we can have one of those little adjustable, those little knobs, you know, that come up the side, and you can raise or lower it. And we'll go down into the wheels. I'm gonna do like a. Um, that'll be like a, I'm going to make like a star shape and we'll extrude from that and it'll go down and then we'll just add some wheels and it'll be nice and easy. So let's go in here. Okay, and going back into edit mode, we're just going to insert some insert some shapes. I had a cylinder here. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, so I had this dog all weekend, and he was his name was Milburn, and he was a super good boy. Um, not really, he was a, he was he was very bad, but you know, bad dogs need homes too. He wasn't bad; he was just like, uh, you know, he'd grown up in a shelter. Like he didn't know what was going on. Um, but it definitely made me like realize how used to having a really well trained dog I am. Like my the dog that I have have is just extremely well behaved, <laughs> and uh, I can do things like have plants that are toxic to dogs, and just know that she's not going to eat them because she is a super good girl. Uh, that's not true with foster dogs. Uh, the dog is fine, but I had to like move a lot of plants outside and uh like every time i turned around he'd have like god he had like a um i was hanging out on the back porch and um hadn't seen him for a second and i was like okay where is he and i looked around and he's chewing on something uh and i said to eve my girlfriend i'm like i'm like what's he chewing on and she's like oh it's probably just one of the bones we had a bunch of bones out there um and i, I was like I'm gonna check so I go and I check and he's got a like a full light bulb in his mouth uh, <laughs> and I don't even know where it came from like it's not I mean it must have been on the back porch somewhere um, but man puppies are dumb puppies are super dumb um, and uh, the glass didn't break and he was totally fine but uh, yeah, clean your house before you get a foster dog. Why didn't I bring the puppy into stream with me? Uh, this place would be destroyed. This place would be destroyed. I could bring my dog into stream, and she's super well behaved. Yeah, a light bulb. So the it's not a total mystery light bulb. Like I've got like some of those little globe lights on the back porch, and <clears throat> uh, somehow he must have gotten one off of there, or maybe one had fall like gotten unplugged, and he found it. But it was one of the, it was like a little, like a little light bulb. Uh, but yeah, it didn't break and he's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my dog would be super good in here. She is uh, very well behaved. This dog, Milburn, was not. Though he is a sweetheart and he's up for adoption at Saving Grace. So you can go, <clears throat> go find him there or on their website. Um, 
He's a total sweetheart. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? Uh, can I add objects with? How do I do a star shape? I think I want to do a circle. And I want it to have. How many legs does this thing have? As like. It has five legs, but six legs would be easier, I think, because it's less weird angles. Uh, so let's say vertices six times about one in the middle of each like prong, and then a one on either side, and then. I want to do the same thing on the like inside. So six times. There we go. Thirty-six. Let's try it. Thirty-six. Uh. Sure. Okay. So then, I'm gonna go. There's three that I want. There's three that I want. One, two, three, one, two. Three. For those of you watching and thinking, there has to be a better way to do that. I'm sure there is. Okay, and then we're gonna go scale and bring that in. Bring it in nice and close, like that. Do the same thing for you. But maybe also. No, that doesn't really work, does it? It's a hard shape. But I think it's kind of close. Okay, so what I'm going to do from there is take all this stuff and. You guessed it, we're going to extrude. What happened? That was wrong. All this stuff and. There we go. Extrude it like that. Is it kind of a weird shape? It is kind of a weird shape. I wonder what we can do about it. Um, for now, I'm going to go. I'll just bring what are you? What do you do? Oh, let's add cylinder. Thanks, mod. Um I think I wanna take all of these folks. Go underneath. And we'll grab all this stuff.
And so over the weekend, I played some VR putt putt. And uh, even though I work in the VR lab, um, I don't, I don't really do a lot of like extended stays in uh, in the virtual realm. I usually am only in for like ten to fifteen minutes at a time. So this was like, I had some friends and they both got. Um, they've got the new they've got the quest twos they've got two sets of them and so we were playing uh we were playing mini golf in space against each other uh and it was freaking rad it was super cool um then i got my butt kicked real bad uh but it was like it was really disorienting. Okay, so here's the problem that I'm just realizing is that I did not put a face on top of this. So how am I gonna fix that, you ask? Um, I have some ideas. We're gonna want the wireframe. Let's get all of these guys and let's get this stuff and this stuff and you and this stuff and this stuff it's just all of this all of this stuff and I think inserting a face inserting a face uh, New edge face from vertices. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's it. Cool, cool, cool. Look at that. We did it. Um, nope. Let's go into. This is still in edit mode. Wireframe. Get all of you. You're coming with me. Okay. We'll go like that. Object mode. Cool, look at that. We got a little chair. No, that's not what I want. Control? Yeah. Rad. It does need wheels. I'm going to worry about that. I guess we got to add the little thing, too. Okay. Edit mode, edit mode, so I can get individual vertices. Um, bring all that down a little bit. Um, and then we can just. Select and our favorite tool, we're going to add a cylinder. So that's probably too long. <laughs> Uh, but you get the idea. No. Um, Jillian, is there a little bit of music playing on the stream? Are you able to hear that? Scale, 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 come on. 
No music. Okay. Um, that's fine. Everyone just has my, my lovely voice instead. Okay, cool. Here's a little here's a little guy. Um, that's where our disgruntled employees are going to sit while they work in our terrible mystery office. Uh, so what else? We are gonna need. Yeah, this is this is the real deal. Um, <laughs> it might not be a chair that has uh, satisfied employees enough for them not to go on like a, I don't know, summon a demon or something, uh, whatever the mystery turns out to be. But it is like a, it looks like a chair. Um, let's make another object. Maybe we should make um, a desk. Uh, let's move. You down. Okay, and we're going to do Shift A to insert something. Um, uh, mesh, we're going to do. A cube, a classic. Um, so I guess the way I've done stuff like desks before was just to make a few cubes and then just sort of like smash them together, so that there's like a like a long cube, a long cube, long cube, long cube. I'm gonna want to try something different, and maybe we can kind of carve it. Uh, by going into edit mode. Is that too high? How high is the desk? Oh, I screwed up. You don't get to come with. Okay. Okay, and then. Maybe we'll just, there's a smart way to add. Because if you just go subdivide, then you'll get subdivisions that are the same proportions as the, as the thing that you're subdividing. So like, if I wanted this to be made of perfect squares, I would have to add fewer um, along like the Y than I am adding along the X axis. Uh, and there's probably a smart way to do that. So I was gonna make it, I'm just trying to try something a little different. Um, 
and I was gonna make it like a like an executive desk where it's like flat on the sides, so it's like a box, like a uh, on the sides. So it's not open on the sides, so it's not gonna have like individual legs. It's gonna have like a um, like a flat side, a top, and then another flat side. Um, and I think I'm just going about it a dumb way, but yeah, let's just do let's do it a smarter way than that. I'm just gonna move you up and okay great tabletop um and we'll go to insert some things we're gonna add some cubes That was weird. Yeah, so the not the not well thought out way that I was trying to do it just to do something different, I guess, was to make a box and then just like a subdivide and then carve away all that stuff on the inside. I I don't know why I wanted to do it that way. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um but let's go with you. A little thinner. Take all you. Bring you in a little bit. That seems reasonable. And then, I guess, I don't really know what the copy-paste sort of situation is in Blender. But that's sort of what I'm going to try to do. Um, uh, control. Can I just copy and paste? Oh, there are so many options for what to do with my vertices. Uh, isn't that robust? Let's see. Sphere. We'll just do a command C, command V. That didn't work. No, we're just going to eyeball it. Because that's the kind of game we're making. Weird. Uh, 
object mode. Edit. Go. Boom, boom. Yeah, that's more or less kind of what I'm talking about. I guess it's a little thinner on the left side, so we could fix that. chair, crummy little desk. We're going to go object mode and put a mat cap on this to make it look a little cooler while we're working with it. That's nice. All right, y'all. Um, I think when uh, I'm going to take five and grab some water, uh, it's very executive looking. Maybe this is, yeah, you know, it's not as cubically. I think once I add the cubicle dividers and then just like copy that a bunch of times, uh, it'll look a little scarier. We could add some ambient weird lighting. Um, but I'm going to take five and I'm going to grab some water. Um, but I'll be right back and when I get back we'll make a computer and then maybe we'll start putting these guys in cubicles and make a, like a really creepy, maybe we'll make it just huge, like a, like a big warehouse full of cubicles with some creepy lighting. Okay. Um, but I'll be back in just uh, like five minutes. I'm going to run downstairs and grab a bottle of water uh, and see you all in a minute.
Sorry, I was muted. We're back. Uh, I got some water. We're staying hydrated. I almost got a coffee. Glad I didn't. Um, but it was tempting. <clears throat> On Friday, during my studio, I got a, I drank a bunch of coffee and regretted it. <laughs> uh, because I felt so very anxious. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, man, I just, I just love, I just love an iced coffee so much. Uh, but I think that's like the sign, that's like how I know I'm getting older, is that if I have a coffee after like 3 p.m., I'm going to be extremely high strung all night. <laughs> um, I used to just crush coffees all day. And now I'm a sensitive old man. Let's see. So, computer. Uh, we added a cube. That looks like a computer, right? to edit mode gonna take a look at all my vectors let's just scale this that's not what I want scale tool bring this whole guy down be like our stand um, so we just need like a stand and then another maybe just a rectangle going up the back and then a plane on top of that uh, and then we'll add um, a bevel to the inside of that so it's got like the edges of the monitor. That's my plan. Um, so maybe the best way to do this is going to be to subdivide U, subdivide again, and select you guys. Maybe over, you over here, you over here and then all of these and we're gonna extrude to make you Uh, so alt will keep, this is kind of the same as like like Adobe rules, alt will keep um, when you're when you're making your, your square or whatever, if you don't have alt it'll drag from the corner, if you do have alt it'll do, it'll start at the center and you have got the radius going so, um, and that's the same with like 
you know, Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever. Um, pretty standard. Uh, not all things like that translate into Blender, but a lot of them, the good ones do. Do you? Oh, and that also works when you're doing 3D stuff, like adding the key of Destiny. That's nice. That's good of them. Uh, that was a little too boxy, a little too wide. I'm going to go you. That's subdivide. Basically, what I want is to take these inside points. Except for you guys, not you. Killing me. You're killing me here. Get rid of some of you. Scale. I want to get that like real close to the edge. It's funny, it seems closer on the bottom. Um, but then I'm just going to move it back. I believe that's about the right amount to hopefully create. A little bit of a bevel. I think that looks kind of decent. A little clunky. It's a little too much. Looks like it's an object. Yeah, that's kind of cute. Just got a little bit of a ridge to it. Um, all right, edit. And honestly, I think that's that's like fine on the back. This isn't, you know, like I said, we're going for low res here. We're not going. We're not trying to uh, make like high art. We're just trying to make something that we can manipulate in our sick game. <laughs> Office is PC oriented or uh, um, I mean I feel like I feel like like if you're in a cubicle uh, at least the kind of cubicle I'm imagining if and you have a Mac uh, that's very unexpected. But yeah, I think this is a PC. Um, although the, if you get the Apple external displays, like I love having an extra monitor and I only have a laptop, I don't have a desktop at home. Um, I don't have an external, I don't have a secondary monitor, but the, if you buy the Apple ones, that's like a $3,000 monitor. That's nuts. So I definitely am still gonna get a monitor that looks like that because I am poor. Not poor, I'm just broke. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, there probably should be like a little tower over here or something. Let's not worry about that right now. Boom. When I went downstairs to get water, there's like there's a bunch of this exact chair uh, right at the back of uh, the library at uh, DH Hill. I know I said I was gonna add wheels, but I'm not gonna do that right now. So 
let's make some more let's just do the cubicles and I think just to make it modular we can go like uh, mesh cube too high. Yeah, there we go. have had one or two cubicle jobs over the years and uh, it sucks so you know good place for a, a creepy little like murder mystery or whatever we're making yeah that feels like an like an oppressively sized cubicle which is kind of what I'm going for um, Let's add a no. Just realized that I can select A to select the whole object. That's useful. Um, don't need it right this second, but like that. Okay, that seems like a good start. Uh, let's go. So what I need to figure out how to do is how to repeat this whole thing like 60 times. So I'm gonna do some Googling real quick. I don't know if you can hear that guy, but I'm going to listen to him on these. Shh. 
Shift D. Should have known. Uh, so we're gonna go into object mode. Let's look at our mat cap. I guess my, my one fear with doing this is that I haven't textured this and I'm gonna have to at some point and if I make a million of them then I might have to do it a million times but um, let's not worry about that right now uh, so let's try it shift D Ooh, nice. Okay, so if I want to go on the x-axis, there's that, which is not what I want. I want to go on the y-axis. Ooh, yeah, that's so easy. Gorgeous. Look at that. Okay, now I'm going to zoom way out. Shift D. And why? Shift D. Why? Amazing. That's so easy. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Um, what I'm wondering is how to do that and then rotate it. I guess I could just go. Go along the X, we'll go over here, and then rotate. The rotate tool always screws me up. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a way to make it snap to to snap to certain angles and degrees, but I don't know that. I don't know that trick. Shift. Ah, uh, okay. That hopefully is correct. beautiful it's terrifying it's everything I wanted okay um, do seem to have also been duplicating light sources and cameras which are things I don't want X Go. That's too 
far apart. Um, a little more claustrophobic. We'll get them out. Yeah, something kind of terrifying about that. Imagine like something spooky chasing you down here in the middle of the night, like, and we'll get like a little light from all these monitors maybe. Cute. Now it seems like like a Silicon Valley startup. And they gave it all a quirky color so that uh, it's not oppressive, or so that it doesn't violate some workers' rights regulation. Okay, and what do I have to do now? I have to add, I'm gonna add a very big plane and that's gonna serve as our floor.
think no. Let's look up some lighting tips. Um, lighting in Blender. Maybe that's something I want to do in Unity. I don't know, we're rapidly approaching the, the part of this development process where my skills are outmatched by the things I don't know um, how to do. Well, where are our light sources right now? I've got a few of them. Okay. Sorry, I'm having some problems here. The tablet. And uh, I've been terrible and talk about horror. I have not saved any of this. So let's say scary office cube goals. Today's what the like fourth or fifth. Seventh. Uh, nine, seven, and one. And save Blender file. Put it on the desktop for now. Uh, sorry, I'm going to be right back. I'm just going to restart Blender real quick.
All right, um, I'm back. I'm still having some trouble with my zoom tool on this. Uh, let's go to edit mode and see if it works there. Figure out how I screwed with the tablet settings before. Look around, deselect object. <laughs> Where am I? Okay. Doesn't want to let me zoom anywhere. It will let me snap to view, and it's super zoomed in on something when I do that. Maybe just zoomed in too far, and it won't let me. There's a camera, that's fun. Ah, uh, we're working again. Okay, I don't know what I did, but we're good. All right, so I was reading yesterday about UV editing. So uh, in order to paint on something directly in Blender, you need uh, to create a UV map. And let's just, I guess I gotta put the horse before the cart here, but if I have to delete a bunch of this, then we'll just do that. But. Uh, Say we've got this guy, and I want to create a UV map of it. Object mode, select you. Add modifier. UV project. I guess we gotta Google it.
create UV map blender. Come on, Google, do your thing. The main thing is that if I just look it up on, I'm looking up on my phone, if I look it up on here, y'all won't be able to hear it too, which is not ideal, but I guess we'll do it that way. Going in. Okay. to Blender UV mapping. That's what we're looking for. So we're, if you can't hear this, we're just going to be making like a 2D map of the 3D objects so that you can just draw around it.
So I'm watching uh, videos to learn how to do this. I think. It seems like a lot, and so I'm going to study up before uh, my next stream. Um, and in the meantime, let me see what I can do here. To start to... Control you, shift you. I've got the UV editor open. I just want to add a UV map to my computer monitor here, which is one of the tough things about Blender is that there are so many versions of it. They've been really good about updating it, and it's a totally free software. But how to do something uh, changes a lot. Uh, from year to year. Let's see, like, what am I, what am I doing here? <laughs> I'm just screwing up all my viewports right now. Uh, I just want not a dope sheet, but it sounds cool. Properties. That's what I want. I just wanted to go back to properties. New layer properties. Tell you what, folks, once I figure this out, it's all over. I'm going pro. UV warp? What I really want is like a UV wrap. Just wrap it in wrap it in UV. Get rid of that. Add modifier UV project maybe. It's not gonna let me add a skin to it. Oh god it let me add a bunch of skins. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. What do you mean? What is this? <laughs> well, I wanted a nightmare chair. I guess I made one. Good God. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna make you go away. You just hit a couple command Z's. <laughs> Horrifying. Okay. Yeah, right I've got I've only got ten minutes left, so I'm just kind of screwing around with some of these funny little modifiers. Settings are inside the physics tab. Look like it might be physics. Scene properties. Particle properties. Physics properties.
I don't know much about this stuff, but I feel like if you've ever seen those videos where like, like it'll be like a guy that's been made in like Blender or Unreal, and all of a sudden it'll like, like collapse and it's like fabric or something. It's like a different thing. I think that's how they do that. It's just by playing with the physics properties. Um, but I'm I'm getting distracted. I'm distracting myself. See, fella in our YouTube video, what he did was just hit U or Shift U, Control U. I don't have a command here. Uh, that doesn't seem to be working for me. Maybe we can. textures add a texture how about we add just a base color okay oh we have a base color okay okay this is fun maybe I don't need to do that UV stuff because I'm not really trying to like apply an existing texture to it I'm just trying to bluish white oh yeah that's what I'm talking about okay sick sick this is fun okay how did I do that I did add base color don't want that base color anymore I want you to be a different base color Isn't this neat? Okay. Let's make you white and we'll do strength is high brushes. Oh, I'm on an eraser. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want color. Okay, add works. Add is working. I don't have to get in there and do the finer, the finer stuff. I'll just make that monitor. I'm gonna make this very bright white for now. I do wonder if I can just select, if I can like grab a specific and like limit to a specific vertex. I want to go, go gray here, go cool gray. It is funny, it's like spray paint, it kind of gets all over everything. Okay, this is obviously a learning process. This isn't gonna be a, like a final sort of thing. second y'all you 
Yeah, pretty clumsy. There's probably a better way to do this. Because uh, <laughs> that's not a normal looking... Um, looking base for a computer. But it's getting somewhere. We're learning, folks. We are coming along. Slowly but surely. It's a little more alive than it was. That light blue, that baby blue is not... Uh, does not scream uh, horror uh, video game to me, but um, <laughs> I also like the color, but I feel like it it is too nice uh, for a scary office. <laughs> uh, although maybe, you know, maybe that's an approach. Maybe this is a very bright, colorful office. And uh, and that's where the, the irony of the horror comes in. It's not, it doesn't have to be horror. It's a mystery. It's not horror. So... Uh, yeah, well, I think that's just about going to wrap it up. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to get learned on this, uh, painting process, uh, so that next time we come in, um, I can really, uh, pull out the big guns and show you all some cool stuff. Um, if... Uh, any of our many, many viewers have any suggestions, you can always drop them in the comments for what to make next time. Um, I think, because I didn't think very well about how to paint this office, I'm going to have to delete a lot of my uh, cubicles and remake them. But if I go back down to one and I just paint that one, then I can, I can definitely... Uh, it'll be a lot faster. So... Um, anyway, thanks again, and uh, next week I'm going to be moderating, but Jillian is going to be streaming, um, and so uh, she'll probably do something really cool for all of you. So, uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs>